Hey, what's going on guys? Mike here back in the aquarium lab with another setup video that I think you guys are really, really going to enjoy. I've been working on my avatar style shrimp tank for about two months now, taking my time to make sure that it's an awesome video for you. There's gonna be a ton of follow-up videos related to this specific build regarding you know, more specifics on how I made the floating rocks, as well as what I decided to put into the tank invertebrate-wise, and I think a lot of you guys are gonna think it's really cool. There will be links to those videos as soon as they're done at the end of this video, as well as in the description where you can also find all the stuff that I used to make this project happen. I can't wait any longer, guys. I hope you enjoy this one. Let's start the build. All right, guys, so first up is the prep phase of the project. I started with a 29 gallon tank and removed the rim, top and bottom. I added in a quarter inch piece of glass across the top to act as a new center brace, which I primarily needed to rest some scaffolding on, which we'll touch on later here in the video. A brace of some sort for a 29 gallon tank is pretty much required for structural reasons. Without it, this tank did bow quite a bit and we definitely don't wanna spend a bunch of time and money on a tank only to have it explode randomly. You'll notice that I have a large piece of white construction paper behind the tank right now, primarily to help with filming, but later on I'll cut it and fix it into place as a permanent background. I picked a 29 gallon tank for this build because I wanted a little bit more height and length compared to a 20 gallon, but mostly went this route because the dimensions of a 29 fit perfectly here on this portion of the workbench and I'll get a little bit more height, which you'll see is really important later on when we build the aquascape. So with the tank in place and everything ready to go, I start out by adding in my substrate. This time around, I'm choosing to go with fluval stratum. I wanted to do something different this time. You guys know that I pretty much always use potting soil in my tanks, but I just felt like trying something new. This stuff helps to reduce pH and KH in an attempt to create a more shrimp and plant friendly environment. This stuff is pretty spendy though for what you get. It's not the most expensive option out there, but I ended up using about 12 liters of this stuff when it was all said and done. Done. To help reduce the total amount that I needed, I added in some pre-washed pea gravel filled nylon bags, which helped me to get the height that I wanted and saved me from needing another big bag of stratum. This is my go-to method for making hills in my aquascapes, and I totally recommend you guys give it a try the next time you set up a tank. Once the bags were in place, I added the fluval nutrient substrate. Note that despite the instructions saying to just rinse it once gently before you put it into your tank, I ended up triple rinsing it and pretty well for that matter based on what I've read about this stuff. You'll see later on when we fill the tank, it does still make things pretty cloudy, but it does go away. Once the substrate was filled in, it was time to start creating the hardscape. This is the portion of the setup that always takes me the most time and especially with this build. Because we're making an avatar themed tank, we're obviously gonna be making use of rock that appears to be floating and figuring out exactly how I was gonna do that took me a long time and a lot of trial and error. I'll go into more detail regarding the quote unquote floating rocks here in a second. Let's first discuss the hardscape in the bottom portion of the tank. All of the rock that was used in this build was pumice that I got from my local fish store. These pieces were originally supposed to be for some sort of chinchilla toy or something, and they were all strung together with a copper wire. That's why each piece randomly has a hole going through the middle, but it's not gonna be a problem for our application. We can hide this stuff really easy down the road. I think this stuff has a great color and overall look that fits the avatar theme perfectly. Most of the pumice that I got was buoyant enough to float, so initially I saved those pieces for the avatar component. This whole time I was thinking about where I wanted the floating rock to be relative to the non-floating ones and how their position would affect the scape. At this point, I also added on the LED light source to help with filming. For this tank, we're gonna be using the new Phoenix Planted Plus 24-7 SE LED, which Phoenix was nice enough to donate. At the time of this recording, the fixture's been on the completed tank for almost a month now, and I'm super pleased with it. I'll talk more about this once the tank is finished. After I had most of the rocks in place, I filled in a few of the low spots where I could still see my nylon bags, and decided to add in some manzanita twigs that were donated for this build by manzanitadirect.com, my go-to place for driftwood. There's a coupon code down in the description for some manzanita wood if you happen to be interested. I super glued more than a few twigs around the bottom rocks in a way that made them look like they were connected. Super gluing also ensured that they wouldn't float up away from the scape once it was filled, since a few of them weren't waterlogged and because I didn't want them shifting around the place. My goal here was to create more or less of a permanent aquascape. 
Now that the substrate portion of the aquascape was done, I moved on to creating the floating rocks. I'm going to dedicate an entire video to the ins and outs of how exactly I made all of these pieces and it should be linked in the description as well as the end of this video. Basically, I forced the pumice to sink via boiling and then used a file to customize and shape them and add character. I waterlogged them because some of the pieces I had would sink naturally just after a few days of floating. Based on this variability in float time, I knew that if I attached them via the bottom of the stones to the substrate somehow, it would have only been a matter of time before they lost buoyancy and messed up the whole scape. So I decided to avoid this by sinking them and hanging them from the top of the aquarium. This choice ended up being the right one, I think, but there's definitely more than one way to do this. Some of you are probably thinking, well, why did you still use pumice if you sank it? You could have used any rock you wanted to if you weren't going to take advantage of that buoyancy factor, and you'd be correct. I stuck with the pumice for a few reasons. One, I really like the gray color that it has. I think it's perfect for the theme. Two, even that it doesn't float, the pumice is still fairly buoyant and it puts very little tension on the method that we're gonna use to suspend it. And when doing water changes, this definitely helps. And three, the pumice is super easy to carve out holes in, which I needed to do in order to add big clumps of plants. We'll get to that here in a second. To finish off these avatar rocks, I added a stainless steel eye bolt to each one and glued them in place. To hang the rocks, I needed something to act as a scaffolding and I decided to go with plastic egg crate. I cut it to fit the tank with some overhang on each side and also cut out some notches for the LED light fixture as well as a big portion in the front here so that I could access the tank. Once we hang the rocks, we're not gonna be able to move this scaffold so that was super important. I then spray painted this piece black with some Rust-Oleum 2X so that it wouldn't stand out as much. Speaking of hanging, I used ultra clear fishing line, one end tied to the eye bolt in each rock and I wrapped the top end around some square project wood that I got from the craft store. And later on, I decided to start over and spray paint them black to match the egg crate. These wooden pieces were then sandwiched together and then super glued to prevent any unwinding. Like I said, I'll go into all the little details including how I got these rocks to hang at just the right heights in my follow up video. I positioned the avatar rocks in the tank and moved them around a few times until I was satisfied with where each one was. I really focused on hanging them in a staggered fashion to help create a sense of depth and just give the overall scape some more character. You can see here that the hanging rocks also rotate. This is something that I didn't want and I'll address that once we finish planting. With that in mind, once my rocks were ready, it was time to remove them and plant this tank. Laid out here on the table were almost all the plants that we're going to be using. We have some small java ferns, Anubius congensis, Anubius nana, and nana petite, as well as three different kinds of busa philandra, and some Christmas moss. I'll provide links to all the plants used for this build down in the description, and I have to give a big thanks to H2O Plants for donating the Anubius nana and nana petite I needed to fill in the tank. I began by taking out one rock at a time for planting. The first one that I finished here was just a test to see how things would look and I'll get more into detail with the planting of the remaining four rocks. So while I was envisioning how the floating rocks would look, I also had to think about how I wanted the bottom portion of the scape to look and how I could get things to play off of each other and flow. I added some Anubius congensis and some other plants around the bottom of the tank, making sure that I still had visible space under where those floating rocks were gonna be. With Anubius, all I did was push down a few roots into the substrate to loosely hold them in place. Don't forget that you always wanna keep the rhizome of the plant above the substrate to prevent rotting. The small java ferns started to make their way onto the scene, and I then put in some Busa philandra, which you wanna follow the same technique with, like with the Anubius, to make sure that they grow well. I was fortunate enough to have all these little tight spaces in between the sticks and rock, and that made it super easy to anchor these plants into place. The planting process took a super long time on this build, so I made sure to spray the tank down from time to time to keep things damp. So I just kept planting, making my way around the tank. When that was all done, it was time to finish up the avatar rocks. To plant these things, I started with the nanas and nana petites and placed them roots and rhizome first into the holes that I carved out into the pumice. This was kind of like a fun little puzzle. I had to go through a lot of trial and error with where things could fit and where things couldn't. But if something wasn't quite right or didn't fit properly, I had the ability to carve out larger holes if it required. Small dabs of super glue also helped to hold pieces into place, but I tried to limit its use on these particular plants. I filled in some of the forward facing areas of each rock with some Christmas moss just by simply gluing small clumps of it where I thought it would look good. 
I think this really helps give the rocks a completed look to them. On the largest rock, which would end up being more or less the focal point of the scape, I wanted to fix a big piece of congensis to the back, and I needed to do so using some fishing line. After tying it in place, I covered up the slightly visible line in the front with some more moss. And that was pretty much it. It took a lot of work and time to get everything planted, but planting the rocks in particular went pretty smoothly and didn't take as long as I had suspected. I tried to keep most of the plants up to the top of the rocks, but you could do really whatever you think looks good. Here we have all the rocks in place, and you'll notice I added in some Anubius Nana in between the rocks and wood here on the left to help fill things out and provide some good ground cover. Next, I did some touch-ups with some moss, just super gluing it onto the rocks down on the substrate level. After looking at the tank for a while, I decided to throw in some Tissue Culture Monte Carlo because I had a couple cups of it left over from my other tank build. After that had been added with some tweezers, I pulled out some Dwarf Sage from the tub over in the corner of the lab and added it to the back. Hopefully this stuff will fill in the back here and help create a little bit more depth. All right, so now with all the plants in, the last thing I wanted to do was prevent these rocks from spinning freely. Even with water in the tank, the rocks still have a tendency to do this, and if I circulate the water at all, they're gonna be moving around all over the place. I plan on having a small power head in here that one of the invertebrates will require, so I had to fix this. There's definitely more than one way to prevent the rocks from spinning, but I chose to continue with the avatar theme and connect all of them together with small manzanita twigs. The first connection was really easy. I had a piece down into the substrate that comes up to meet this first rock. I just super glued that in place and that was it. As for the other rocks, connecting all of them together was a huge pain and took me at least two hours to complete. I ended up gluing and or fitting twigs into already available holes that were in a convenient place, as well as having to go as far as removing a rock or two to carve out new holes where I needed them to be. Finally, with all of that out of the way, it was time to fill the tank. Because the stratum substrate is so easily disturbed and gets cloudy pretty easily, I started very slowly by just adding in water with a water bottle. As the substrate became covered, I switched over to a five liter container and poured directly onto a rock to help prevent too much disruption. I also didn't use tap water for this. Rather, I used water from my established 90 gallon. I did this because it's going to allow us to add livestock right away. We don't have to wait for the tank to get up to temperature, and this water also contains a bunch of microorganisms that this tank would otherwise have to culture on its own, which would take a lot longer. So with the tank pretty much all filled up, you'll see that I added one of my used Whisper 10 HOBs with some cycled media and an Aquion 150 watt heater, which I had to make room for by cutting notches out in the egg crate. With that done, I began to add in my Sakura Fire Red Cherry Shrimp, which were just one of the several invertebrates donated for this project by AquaticArts.com. They have a huge selection of fish, plants, invertebrates, and more. I definitely suggest you check them out if you're looking for some new tank inhabitants. I also added in my lone bamboo shrimp, a few Amanos that I had, and finally three auto cats. All of these guys should get along great and I'm super excited to see how they all behave together. Next I dialed in the lighting on my Phoenix Planted Plus 24-7 and got it set to a fairly warm color spectrum. I basically just customized it by playing around with the different amounts of red and blue light until the tank looked pretty good. And just like that, about 7 hours of work later, the tank was finally finished. You can see the aquarium is pretty murky despite going extremely slow and filling and even pre-washing that substrate really good. Coming out to the tank the next day, it's slightly clearer, and I also added in a small Eco Plus circulation pump for the bamboo shrimp, and you can totally tell that he loves it. Another 24 hours later, and the tank is now pretty much crystal clear. I hooked up my CO2 line and chose to run it through a small glass diffuser that bubbles up to the pump's input. I'm just adding a tiny bit of CO2 to this tank right now. It doesn't really need much because it's not a highlight setting, and most of the plants in here don't require it. Pretty soon here, I'll be adding a bunch of new and exciting invertebrates and even fish to this tank, probably in the next week or so, so make sure to stay tuned for all the fun. This setup was probably one of the most challenging to date for me, but it was also one of the most exciting. Looking at this tank, even just after planting, I'm already thinking about how my 125 would look with this type of scape. Being able to create these sort of abnormal aquascapes, or whatever you want to call it, is really my favorite part of having planted aquariums right now. I'm definitely not even close to what would be considered a pro aquascaper, guys, but I think that putting in this time and attempting these sort of abnormal scapes is definitely helping me to learn new things 
and get better. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Maybe you learned something new. I definitely learned a ton on this one. Don't forget to leave a like for the new avatar tank. Subscribe if you're new. Thanks so much for watching guys and we'll see you next time.